Okay, yeah, we are here. We're back. We're here. Uh, here for the first time, for the, <laughs> for the second time. Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Chewed Up and Spit Out. As always, I'm Just Dusty. And I'm still Jeff. And I'm still Tony. <laughs> still Tony over there, the main man. Uh, you've all heard us talk about him multiple times uh, under either Tony or Tony Hunt or uh, even Greybeard. So if you've heard us talk about Greybeard, this is the man. Well, he seems to be answering to it, so. <laughs> yep. Hmm. And we call you Greybeard because not only are you the most classically prof- professional chef I've ever met in my life, but how goddamn long have you been cooking anyway? Shit, since uh, 1982 professionally, but, you know, my mom and grandma taught me how to cook, you know. Got that. So to put it in perspective, since Reagan? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it might have been before that. <laughs> Pre-Reagan. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Oh. Yep. Um, I have no doubts that you've seen pretty much everything, but what does it take to surprise you on a, on a regular in the kitchen? <laughs> um, surprise me in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, my God, a lot of things, man. You know, um, Maybe like a 16-year-old that shows up on time regularly or something? Oh, or? I'm surprised every day in the kitchen. I, <laughs> that's why a kitchen never gets old, man. That's true. <laughs> Only that's that work in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love working in the kitchen. Though. It's, my, it's my forte. It's what I always did. And, you know, I like fixing cars every once in a while and motorcycles and stuff like that. But, man, it's just a passion in the kitchen that really turns me on for sure i always thought that just knowing that you're feeding a stranger who you'll never meet and you're doing your absolute best to uh, make your your best thing happen on a plate for a stranger over and over and over again i always thought that was kind of a special what do you mean by a special i mean like uh <laughs> okay. There we go. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I just love cooking for people. You know, it's, um, different people. You know, I cook for a lot of uh, stars and famous football players and baseball players. And Dude. you know, Barry Switzer was cool. I liked him. Out of everybody, he was pretty cool because he actually really talked to me. Oh, uh, nice. Right on. <laughs> It's beautiful when someone uh, treats us like people. Yeah. I feel like that ha- yep. in, in the kitchen especially like that happens so seldom. It's it's always really nice when yep. you when you cook for someone or treat someone and you know they treat you like people just a little bit. Now Terrell Owens, I cooked for him. He was a um could I say asshole on here? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Cool. He Expl- was an we asshole. got the explicit <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> poster on the bottom oh yeah. my god man he was such an asshole to my staff to my wait staff and waitresses and, you know he brought in these fucking floozy nasty looking hookers and shit i shit you not man wow. god they were so ugly <laughs> you know, going, what the fuck man <laughs> thought he could like make it afford better or something yeah. man <laughs> maybe he had an acquired taste for different sorts of hookers yeah. i guess yeah. did did he eat uh, like with athletes, talking about feeding professional athletes, like do they eat outrageous stuff or is it still just like kind they, of the regular um, stuff? Well, um, my athletes, you know, I you know I kind of cooked for you know um, ate regular food, but this guy ordered three or four orders at a time. I'm going, what the hell, man? Well, I could afford it. You know, like okay, fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I never tip my waitresses. I go, how can you fucking don't tip them, man? I've never understood that. I heard yeah. uh, my sister uh, waited on Jack Nicholson a bunch, uh, like three or four times at a uh, place she worked mm-hmm. on Maui, and she said, yeah, he 100% of the time never tipped. And she was like, one day she came home, and she's like, no, fuck you. Like, I literally just went and spent $10 on that fucking new Jack Nicholson movie. Like, you can afford to throw me a fucking buck for that <laughs> gin and tonic I made you. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Wow. Was this uh, back on Maui? Oh, yeah, back on Maui. Yeah. <laughs> Righto. Yeah. But Willie, Willie Nelson, he, I heard, he's the man to fucking to wait on if you're in the front of the house or to cook for if you're in the back mm. of the house because he'll come through and 
what a lot of the people that, especially on Maui, had told me, like, he'll come through, not only will he tip everyone good, he'll smoke out the entire kitchen. So he'll just, he'll just go stand by the back door of the kitchen uh-huh. <laughs> and just offer to smoke out anyone from the kitchen. <laughs> Nice. Uh, and off, also, a lot of times, from a lot of the people that I've talked to, it's not a random occurrence to be waiting on Willie and have it turn into, like, your shift's over, and all of a sudden, it's like, well, I can't go home. You know, <laughs> I, I got off, and Willie was like, I've been saving you this bar stool for three hours. Like, how am I going to fucking turn that down? <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one to tell the wife when you get off work, I guess. Like, yep. yeah, I'll be home eventually. <laughs> Yep. Stuck with Willie, not sure when we'll be home. Also, he's probably coming with me. <laughs> nice, right on. Oh yeah, quick little refill on the beverages. Hell yeah. But yeah, Tony, it's it's really good to have you on here. It's uh it's exciting to have uh someone with your kind of your caliber of level of cooking coming through. Well, is there a camera I can show some people some stuff? <laughs> Wish I could. <laughs> well, um, so we're talking about restaurants, you know. Um, I used to be a pretty bad jokester in a restaurant. Sometimes. Oh, not you. <laughs> so one day at the House of Blues, I had this fart machine. <laughs> <laughs> I like where this is going already. Oh, my God. So, um, I stuck it in the corner, and man, this thing was so loud. Oh my god! So um, I stuck it in the corner. Every time the waitress bent down, press a button. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, you should put out the most nastiest, juiciest farts you've ever in your life. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> well. You know, like a, the good old uh, fart and boner jokes never go away, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the oldest form of humor. Yeah, oh, <laughs> pretty hell sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> that, that, I'm pretty hell sure yeah. that was the first joke. Two cavemen in a cave, and one of them farts. <laughs> <laughs> Blame the other one. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about the covered wagon. <laughs> the first time I experienced that, um, oh, this this gal I met from Dallas. Man, she put the covers over my head and shit. She farted. Man, I couldn't crawl out of there fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that... Come on, girl. What you eat, man? Yeah. <laughs> and that's crazy, too. That's like the preemptive strike. Because normally it always happens the other way first in the relationship. Where it's uh, like, yeah, you're going to get the covered wagon or the Dutch oven. Oh, man. She stole my heart when she done that. She yeah. was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm in love, but I'm also going to throw up and my eyes are watering. <laughs> Was that cabbage? <laughs> Left out in the rain? In the oh. rain? Was that rain cabbage and gutter shrimp? God damn. Yeah. <laughs> a raccoon's definitely been eating on that cabbage and probably shit in it as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, and the funny thing is, so, uh, um, and this is, you know, uh, me getting into dirty jokes earlier in, in my life than I got into cooking, right? So... I knew what the Dutch oven was as far as the, you know, the old trick. You have the covered wagon fart yeah. and fucking pin their head under the blankets. And I was always told, like, that's called a Dutch oven. So the first time someone was talking about cooking in a Dutch oven, I literally thought they were making a joke about, like, <laughs> cooking some shit with farts. And I was like, that's that's silly. That's silly. You know, do you see that fucking pot roast? I think I could get that done in about eight hours in a Dutch oven. Like, what the fuck are you eating that your farts can cook a pot roast? <laughs> oh, wow. Like, oh, a Dutch oven's an actual thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. They may have been trying to season it first. Season it first, yeah. His ass is a fucking blowtorch. <laughs> blowtorch, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure we've all had those mornings. Yeah. Particularly when you have a taste for hot sauces like I do. <laughs> yeah, You've like, got like a masochistic taste for hot sauces, though. I'll watch you sometimes, and it's like, there's no need for that. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't... That's not just limited to hot sauces, but... Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <you> know? <laughs> um, going back to like a jokes in the kitchen... I think one of my favorite ones I've ever pulled out was, um, I'm sure I definitely was one of the only, like, you know, chefs that had problems with line cooks uh, coming in on Saturday brunch, Sunday brunch, a bit pretty fucking hungover to work, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, like, um, they're halfway, like, leaning on their cutting boards, like, I 
they're, they're flipping eggs with one hand and like trying to hold themselves up with the other hand, you know. And so to make a point, I decided to go ahead and go with a more clever practical joke, you know. You know, this is up in the Northwest where there's inside out programs every five blocks. So it was no problem for me to get a hypodermic needle. And, you know, working in the hot summertime, I always kept like a instant mix like Kool-Aid in the kitchen, you know. So what I decided to do is like a, on a Friday, take like a case of eggs that was meant for tomorrow, go through every couple layers and pick out every couple eggs every now and then. And I'd suck out all of the uh, egg matter from the inside, the yolk, you know, all that stuff. And I'd mix up uh, purple Kool-Aid with mayonnaise and use like the same hypodermic needle to inject purple mayonnaise inside eggs and put those back inside specific uh, egg cartons, you know, to where when they came in on, uh, you know, Saturday, Sunday morning, they're trying to like uh, make a couple like a sunny side up eggs and one cracks out like straight purple goo, you know, purple, hitting the frying purple pan. Purple fucking <laughs> Kool-Aid mayo goo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, had one guy, like, you know, after a while, like, he was like, dude, you got to check with your purveyor, man, because, I mean, some of these eggs just aren't good, you know, trust me. Like, some of these eggs just aren't good. <laughs> They're not even eggs. Yeah. <laughs> he said uh, he almost lost his, uh, you know, well, the night before on his shoes, on the line, when he saw that whole mess just hit the hot saute pan. <laughs> oh, dude, I mean, I'm guessing, I'm guessing leaky roof, like old school leaky roof days, right? Yes, Back sir. in those days, man, you could have caught me with that on a fucking Thursday morning. <laughs> I'm good Monday, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, Saturday, but you catch me with that shit on a Thursday morning and it is over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was one Thursday morning fucking, it was, it was either cucumbers or celery. <laughs> set me off <laughs> it was like i cut i cut fucking celery sticks and smelt the celery and it was like oh, oh too god much. we partied way too hard last <laughs> night <laughs> celery yeah. doesn't even smell like anything <laughs> except for repulsive yeah i just smelt water and now i'm gonna die <laughs> jeez oh yeah how about you tones like um back in the day like what was like your worst smell to smell like on a early morning i know you like to clock in like at some ungodly hours like four or five o'clock in the morning burnt but... toast burnt toast yes the worst thing i ever smelt in my life you wake up in the morning you're going who the fuck burnt goddamn bread man oh man this is... burnt toast is the worst uh I, I can kind of see that happening, you know. I mean, oh, like, uh, like especially like, uh, like that burnt, burnt level where, yeah. like, that automatic toaster yeah. server dropped one almost a fire fucking level of. A and burnt dog breath, you yeah. just say some cat shit. That's pretty bad too, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but no, I don't smell those in the kitchen. Unless a cook had a really seriously <laughs> decent <Yeah>. night. <laughs> what kind of party did you get into? <laughs> Oh, well, I made out with a dog and let a cat shit on my chest for $10. Stick to the anal be bleaching parties, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stick to those. Yes, I have one of my employees' dog looking in the face, but I can't shit, so... <laughs> yeah, and they're so unconscious about it, too. I mean, they're not quite showing off, but they're on the verge of like showing off like a, how bad their breath is. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hear that. Man, I gotta brush my teeth fucking 20 times a day, man. I'm a freak about that shit. Yeah, in the same sense, I'm afraid about washing my hands. All yeah, the god, too. yeah. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. The the mask world has made me way, brush my teeth way more. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I already brush my teeth regularly, but now that I have to smell my own funk fucking twenty four seven, <laughs> like now we're brush we're brushing a lot more these days, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yep, for sure. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I now I figure it out. You know. <laughs> well, with this whole mask thing, like my own like hot breath, like I, don't know, I only smoke one cigarette per shift now. <laughs> Start apologizing to coworkers, like, "Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't realize how bad this was until I had to fucking smell it all day. <laughs> I've uh, been right up in your face, just talking shit all day long, <laughs> and you've just been sitting there taking it." <laughs> yeah, that was about day one of the whole mask wearing for me, and I was like, "Fuck, I definitely got some apologies to make now." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's uh, hmm? oh yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy how much uh, the world has changed with all that bullshit. I mean, smelling your own breath instead of other people's all day is a whole fucking game changer. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, yes, and before we get married, we we can't eat our nose anymore. 
<laughs> well, then I guess I probably would have a lot more uh, fiancés in mind. Yeah. <laughs> Could I see your nose? Not till we're married. Nose. <laughs> that, that's gonna be watched 2021 like 2022 oh, that's gonna turn into the new like big turn on like ch- <laughs> there's gonna be chin fetishes and shit <laughs> Ooh, girl what does your chin look like i could see that i think in other parts of the world they have the right idea because i found a thing like i have something really serious for, like lady ninjas now you know with this whole mask thing all i see is like just the hate and anger in their eyes before they try to slaughter me it's kind of nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes, we can now read you from the eyes now instead of a smile or smirk or whatever. I'm the worst <laughs> about that still because I've always done, uh, and it, it's some you know different, stupid, over the top smiles, and you know a lot of them are even like the crazed smile where yeah. it's like someone comes up and says something like in two minutes yep. to close, we're seating at twelve top, like nice <laughs> but now it's like i realize i'm like all i've got is crazy eyes all of the smiles have the same eyes and they're crazy eyes so i'll, I'll smile at someone sometimes and they're like what what the fuck's up <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh shit i was it's giving, you, it's giving you a cheesy smile and a thumbs up but it just looked like murder eyes if you cut up the bottom i have a good side because actually because i can actually stick out my tongue at people that I think are dicks. <laughs> it's true. Mm-hmm. You know, give them the old raspberry. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there, there. It Man. seems like a lot of the dicks have been coming out too. Oh my god! I can't believe it. Man, I can't believe this town lately. What's What's happening to my town in Durango? It, it's turned to something that you did not know. You know. And I guess like. Uh, I'm lucky like that you know we got here maybe like seven years ago to where like now people are like, starting to trust us outsiders yeah you know like maybe in three more years we actually be called orangutans or something like that yeah. but we got in before it we felt the quickening we felt the quickening yeah we got the run to the hills and yes yeah, so all my children were born here right on nice yeah great spa- place well at least it was a great place for them to be born in but still comparatively speaking oh, to uh, other yeah. parts in the country there's a lot worse places to be. Especially right now. Yeah, shit's good. Oh, I love the rain. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Man I, don't, man, I don't love it here, man. And this, man, man, there's fishing, there's hunting, there's the chop wood and burn wood in the fireplace. And yeah. Play horseshoes and frisbee Sit. and hell, man. It's, it's got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's got all of the things. I just, I just, and, and, I felt fucking stupid, but I just got out to Lake Night Horse today. Really? And that's like, you know, fucking five minutes from here. <laughs> oh. Yep. All right, we're going to take a quick pause, and we'll be right back after some pizza. Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are back. Yeah, I guess uh, we ordered a pizza and kind of forgot about it. Kind of <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that knocking at the fucking door? <laughs> uh, they're supposed to call into this. <laughs> yeah. Stranger danger, stranger danger. <laughs> so, uh, Tony, yeah, you you coming from uh, kind of the old school world uh, of the kitchens? Like, uh, what are some of the more wild things you've seen in your, in your career? Because, you know, you've got... You, you started pre Reagan, so that was that was fucking back in the days where it was the Wild West, pretty much, from <laughs> what I've heard. Yeah. Well, I threw a plate at a waiter one day because he pissed me off so bad. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna be through it. Well, I kind of feel bad. You know, he's a cool guy, but just pissed me off saying the wrong things. You know. Well, did no, you... I'm really a mellow person in the kitchen. <laughs> did you? <laughs> How was your aim, though? Did you hit him? <laughs> no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> No, I'm... <laughs> oh my God! What kind of person am I in the kitchen? Radical, radical, <laughs> radical, yeah. man. That one I could see pretty easily. Oh yeah, uh, man. I'm like Barbosa, man, in the kitchen. Yeah, see in two days after that. You, you get <laughs> shit done though. I mean, I know from this from the short time I got to work with you, that was one thing I for sure noticed. Is you get shit done and you get shit done right, and that's. That's uh, 
I think I think a lot of people overlook is it's not just getting shit done; it's also getting shit done right. You know. Yeah. Well, that's where the old school comes along, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no one's gonna pass by a cloudy consomme to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Graybeard, huh? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, old school. That's cool. Old school. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes down to it, like I could ask you any day of the week because I have your phone number. Like, oh, about this vicious swag, like, I think it's a little bit too, like, I don't know, not runny enough, not you know, it's still too thick, something like that. And you'll tell me exactly how I fucked up before I even relate to you what I did. <laughs> well, I like using like grapeseed oil in my VC schwas, man. It's just different. Well, it's not different; it's just a uh, more healthier oil. Uh, but. If you want to make it a little bit more, you know, like Italian, like VC, you know, like uh, just uh, a little bit of olive oil, some fresh herbs, mix it up, let it sit. The citrus makes it, man. Like, man, just fucking squeeze some orange in that shit, too, man. Man, I mean, it turns it on, man. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That's why we're throw, asking. <laughs> man, just do some zest in that shit, too. Mix it up and. I, and I was pretty oh. sure there's gonna be some zest there, but like, a, do you like caramelize or like, a, you know, do anything to your zest, or you keep it like fresh? Do you add it at the end, or do you cook with it? I uh, okay, um, I actually uh put it at the end. Yeah, just to keep like uh, that fresh aromas. Yep, got mm-hmm. you. Okay. That's what you want, man. You want those fresh, those fresh scents, man, and fresh flavors and. Always add that shit to the end, man. It really turns it on. Oh, my God. Well, good. That's exactly what I would do. So now I know I have a chance with you in a cook-off. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do feel like uh, Zest, um, and that, that was one of those things, like the moment someone showed me that, it just changed my life. Like the, the peel's not just like com- completely worthless. Like you just made the most sexy, flavorful thing yeah. with that. Like, oh shit, I've been throwing those away for my whole <laughs> life. Holy shit. <laughs> and can you actually like a zest of banana peel now that I think about it? Because I've been throwing those away forever. No, I can't do that. No. Just, just, just fucking dry them out and smoke them, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, smoke them on a smoker, not like try to get high off banana peels. Well, I meant <laughs> smoking them getting high, man. <laughs> How, how big's your banana peel bong? That's the real question. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, they probably have like a word for that down there. Yes, we used to make snow bongs back in the day. Not anymore because uh, it's like it doesn't snow here anymore. <laughs> snow bongs. That's growing growing up on the islands. That's not something I ever imagined. We used to take we used to take sun rips. Okay, uh, we we used to do that all the time because you know it's always sunny. So it's mm-hmm. like I even had a friend who he would never carry a lighter, but he would just carry a magnifying glass, oh, hell like yeah. the size of a coin. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, do you guys do you use fucking lighters for weed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably on his keychain yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Like uh, up in Oregon, I remember like doing like a uh, dirt rips out in the woods, where you take uh, your hunting knife and you dig a shallow like a uh, angle at one end and a shallow angle at the other, hollow it out, put your weed on one side, and kiss the earth. <laughs> you know? oh. I gotta try that. Yeah, I actually, that's something I really wish, like, young Dusty knew. That, cause there have been some times where I was just like, now nah, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've, we've, we've run out of everything. We've stripped the papaya tree of all of its branches over the last <laughs> week. <laughs> cause no one has a pipe, and now, you know, we're just fucked, guys. Someone's gotta get papers. <laughs> a knife and a lighter. <laughs> knife and a lighter, yeah. But, you know, in the kitchen, I think we're all resourceful as we have to be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think we touched on it earlier. Like, your Garmin J skills, like, uh, you're talking about, like, you know, ice carving. We touched on the uh, your mushroom tournays. What's actually, like, you know, do you feel good about, like, going after, like, watermelons and pineapples, like, making intricate carvings like that? Or is it? Um. Yes, I have them on my Facebook, what I used to do. But uh, I haven't done one in quite a while, but. Man, if I have my gamache tools, man, I'm gonna rip out a fucking beautiful watermelon and and uh, pumpkin carvings. Man, <laughs> well, Halloween is coming up. <laughs> yeah, man, you guys gotta see my pumpkin jack o' lantern. I won 
lots of contests on that shit, man. <laughs> My own design. Nice. Nice. Well, I don't think I've won any contests with my pumpkin carving, but I've definitely impressed a neighbor or two. <laughs> oh, shit, man. I have it here on my yeah. phone. Let me show you this shit, man. Yeah. It's fucking <laughs> badass. I, I, I feel like uh, every time I've carved a pumpkin, like on my own, it comes out looking either drunk or stoned. <laughs> like I get I get a little too asymmetric with like oh, the man. eyes or something, and all of a sudden it's like, a fucking pumpkin has had way too much. <laughs> Does that relate upon you carving the pumpkin? I think it does. <laughs> I mean, do you, do you remember that one year we had uh, the pumpkin I carved came out looking sto- so stoned instead of putting it outside, we threw a Rasta wig on it and put it in the fucking corner. <laughs> like, this guy, he, he's just going to be a part of the fucking smoke circle. He doesn't want to be oh, out there. Man. It's stressful in the outside world. <laughs> he's so identified with the pumpkin carving. Yeah. <laughs> Made it a friend. Made it a friend. That's a little beady, that's something. Rasta hat, some dreads. <laughs> nice. Was that the Blue House? Mm-hmm. That sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah. I, I must have been there. <laughs> yeah, you hung out with that dude a time or two before he rotted away in front of us. <laughs> Watch me rot away in front of you, man. Oh uh, yeah, the pu- well, the pumpkin Rasta. Oh, yeah. well, that's cool. <laughs> One day, you know, look over like, hey, oh shit, bro, you're leaking. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a Rob Zombie flick or something? Yeah. <laughs> Time to take you to where pumpkins go at the end of their life. To get beaten up and thrown in a dumpster. <laughs> or the oven. <laughs> or the oven, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, though. Typically, uh, once they're leaking, I won't eat them. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. like if, I've, if I've slacked on that pumpkin long enough, it's saggy and leaky. Man, my grandma used to make this fried pumpkin with fucking vinegar and shit. Oh, my God. It was so good, man. It was better than french fries. Okay. Fried Better than sweet potato fries. I've never, yeah, I've never heard of that. That thing was so good. So tossed in the vinegar again. At, vi- tossed in the vinegar at the end, and yes. then like a you know batonade, basically fried. Yep, like a fried them things crispy. Oh man, it's so good. Yeah, never heard of that either. Man. Yeah. If what you're talking about your mother, like that's like pre Kennedy, maybe. My grandma. <laughs> man. My grandma was a mean lady, but man, she taught me cooking. <laughs> yeah, because I washed her. Nice. And now I'm a damn good Italian chef, man. I can cook real Italian food. <laughs> Heard that. <laughs> so look at that fucking pumpkin. Jesus Christ, where'd it go? <laughs> oh, it's not his fault. It's not the pumpkin's fault. Not the pumpkin's that. fault. <laughs> Somewhere in Tony's phone is hiding this pumpkin. He calls Jack O' Lantern. <laughs> no, it's a uh, house on the haunted hills. Oh, there it is. Bing. I caught shit like that. God damn, you got to be kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you. Okay. That's what I caught. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I... <laughs> That's a whole horror story yeah. scene. Yes, isn't that know? fucking bad, dude? Yeah, it's dude, a whole man, scene going on. Man, man, the first time I carved that shit, I drew it out on a pumpkin because I had this vision like, I gotta fucking do this shit. So I did it and fucking entered the contest. I won 1500 bucks, man. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Well, paid off the That's pumpkin. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Hells yeah, buddy. Paid off that pumpkin in a, well, oh, geez. The, the whole patch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, well, a pumpkin only cost me 11 bucks, so. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's quite a bit of a return. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it took a lot of hours, too. I think it took me like fucking three and a half hours to carve that shit, man. Oh, Jesus. Really? Yeah, <laughs> half, you know, less than half a day's work for 1500 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Oh, fuck yeah. Damn. $11 investment. Fuck <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I would put I would put my number on like three and a half days to come up with something <laughs> that intricate. Okay. That, my pumpkin's already leaking by the time I'm done. Jeez. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's one thing. Like, can you like dry age a pumpkin carving to make it perfect by Halloween so it doesn't look all crisp but looks like old and scary? Just yes, car- that was one side of it. Oh jeez. Let me fucking. That's the top of it. Fucking check out that cloud of lightning. Doesn't that fucking shit look cool? Um, <laughs> dude, you got that... clouds in there? I know. Hey, look at that shit. 
so you know, folks, we're looking at a, a whole scene of a, yeah. like a horror story you know, with the clouds, the buildings, the like a, the yeah. antagonist, and the, the protagonist. Ghost, Dude, man, I caught ghosts coming out of the fucking buildings and shit, man. Man, that shit took me a while, man. Look at that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three so and a half hours, shit. you say? Like yes. yeah. <laughs> graveyard and shit, and fucking have that. man. It fucking has the moon. Like man, I had this light that actually did that shit. That's why it looked so cool. <laughs> I can't find it. I don't know what the hell it went to, but I need to find that shit again. I don't think if I, I could even come up with that good of an idea in three and a half hours, let alone just execute it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good yep. point. Yeah, and that was not a stencil. I drew that shit, carved it, man. Fuck yeah. Uh, fuck we'll have it. to have you like... Fucking some... people go to me, you use a stencil. It's like, bullshit, man. Man, man, you fucking carve a pumpkin that intricate. You, you think that's from a fucking stencil? Hell no, man. <laughs> yeah. I laugh at people. Like, you fucked up intricate, now. Intricate, intricate, a yeah. stencil. Like, fuck you, man. It's over a stencil. Fuck you. Watch me carve it, man. <laughs> so, to all of our younger chef aspiring listeners, this is how it's done. <laughs> you know... Words from Sir Greybeard, oh. Tony Hunt, the man, the myth, and well, oh, weed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, weed. yeah, that's that's some intricate shit. Yeah, that that's some fucking yeah, that that's a masterpiece. Yeah, it, it's just hanging out on your phone, you know. Yeah. Oh, you guys want to talk about carving? We'll you check this talk out. About carving. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet you oh, can't. Let me put my. Fucking horse's head I did on a pumpkin. A horse's <laughs> head on a pumpkin? Yes. That's some Godfather shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell, my fucking Italian. Nobly done. Hey. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there a fish wrapped in newspaper inside of the pumpkin? <laughs> Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> Take the cannolis. Take the cannolis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love cannolis. Oh, oh, a, a, go, a good fucking cannoli is yes. like that is hard to beat in the dessert world. Yep. I'll take that over a beignet every yeah. day. <laughs> the thing about cannolis, though, is uh, as I've always had the trouble uh, with with eating them, like especially if I eat them at a restaurant, because I want to eat them like it's fucking oh, junk yeah. food, and I'm sitting on the couch, like give me. 13 fucking cannolis, <laughs> please. Like, I just want to sit here and just go. The fuck was it going to show? All that fucking horse head. God damn it. <laughs> Old Tony Excuse showing his true me. Italian colors. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so on the Italian side of things, what's your favorite dish to cook Italian wise? Brajol. Bless you. Excuse you. What? Brajol. Brajol. Okay, uh, the way I do brajol is different from all you fucking people who actually fucking kill the meat in a sauce. You don't have to kill the meat in a sauce, man. What you got to do is make your sauce, man. Make it with a nice veal stock. Make it beautiful, chunky and shit, you know? And it, then, then you zip it. But don't zip it to where it, to where it like, is too puree, man. You got to zip it to where yeah, it's not like too beat up. chunky, yeah. And your brajo, man, I like using the tenderloin and shit. I stuff that shit with a uh, good old Parmesan cheese, a good prosciutto. Um, I don't like using eggs, but some people like eggs in that shit. Like, okay, that's cool. So, gotta put a fucking hard boiled egg in it, roll it up, shit, tie it up. Salt, pepper that shit, and just fucking pan sear it, parlay it with a, okay, a. Um, a parlay is when you pan sear something, you take your butter, you tilt your pan, take your spoon, take your herbs and garlic, and like, like uh, yeah. pour that fucking butter on it to where it foams, man. That's where the flavor comes in. You flip it, do it again. Flip it, do it again. Flip it, do it again. Throw it in the oven five minutes, cut it. Beautiful, medium rare. Beautiful inside. Put on a uh, fucking, um, I don't know, I would like, you know, I would use a, uh, Fucking polenta, man. You know, corn dried tomatoes, basil, mm -hmm. just vegetable stock, fucking creamy and shit. Throw it in there and throw a what kind of sauce. What I use? I would use a truffle nage. A truffle <laughs> nage. Yes. 
It's one of my favorite sauces, man. I think a truffle nage goes with fish and fucking goes with anything. A truffle nage is a veal glace with a uh, truffle, white truffle oil. Okay. Oh. It's a reduction with white wine and shallots. Kind of reduce it just right. Then you throw your, throw your glace in that, reduce it again, and then hit it with your truffle oil and fish it with butter. Pour it all this shit, man. Oh, my oh. God, it's so good. But it's a tricky sauce, man. I've seen a lot of people break this shit. Not all the new. I kind of laugh at them like, what the fuck you doing, man? <laughs> it's so, man, it's so fucking easy to make. Watch. Swoop it up. That's how you make it. Creamy. I know. I watched the guy make it again. Go to me. Pants too hot. Got to work your heats, man. You know. You For don't sure. Want to turn it up, turn it down. Turn you up, don't want to go down. on blast all yeah, the time, yeah. you know. Now, that, now, a saute cook knows his heats. You don't want to turn it up, turn it down, turn it up, turn it down. Especially doing burr blocks, too, man. Shit, man. Man, it. Man, it's so easy doing that shit. You just gotta know your heats and kind of fucking mix that shit up, man, and pour it on. Um, and there I am, just like regretting the taste of Domino's in my mouth, going, "Fuck!" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you think about that hard enough, <laughs> yeah. Well, Domino's, yeah. you got you got something to deliver here. <laughs> yeah. You gotta step up your game. Uh, but yeah, and I think that's that's. Fucking just like words of wisdom right there. Even to know your heat, like yeah. for a saute cook, you yes. gotta know your heat. Gotta yeah. know your heats, man. That's not it's just not. high and off. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like Brunois, like shallots going into a hot pan, turn crispy real yeah. quick. <laughs> oh yeah. That's like a breakfast cooking too, man. Gotta know your heats. Turn a pan up really hot. And fucking pour the eggs in. Turn it down and work them and make sure they're perfect. And... <laughs> Excuse me, you know, like in fucking omelets too, you know. And yeah, for sure. Like, I, I think I could turn any good uh, brunch cook into a dinner cook, but it's really hard to turn a dinner cook into a decent brunch cook at all. You know, that's just what I found in my experience. Yeah. But they, they keep different I hours. do it all, man. Come on, <laughs> man. Man, I do it all. I have no problem doing it all, man. I can do backwards, line cook, fucking, fucking come up with a menu and. Incredible dishes, you know. Like, man. Cost it out in like a tornado some mushrooms at the same time. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, I can cost them out pretty good too. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why you're the most well-rounded, most classical, most well badass legend in this town. It's where no, I'm not going to even challenge you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll take anyone else on this town before you. <laughs> Just know we're fighting for number two. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, there are some pretty good chefs in this town too. And I I think I fucking taught a lot of people in this town. <laughs> Showed them all they knew. <laughs> I, I, I would believe that. Yeah. I can't fucking believe how many people I taught and work with. And they're and they're doing pretty good too, man. Nice. Well you did call yourself, you know, like more of a teacher, you know. Yeah. And at least you're good at that. Uh, some of us are not so well. I mean, I guess I have to like figure out what level I'm working with to like uh, be teaching people. Yeah. I want somebody with, I don't know, like a sophomore set of skills. And I can yeah. show them some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when they get like into middle school or ele ele elementary school, I just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I've never it's... known for being a patient person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, you've definitely never been called that. <laughs> Okay, go mm. for it. Heard. Take Heard. a quick. Yeah, quick uh. break. We'll be right back for the finale. It's back to you. We'll just patch him in. Mm -hmm. What's up, everybody? We are back for the final leg. For sure. We were uh. just talking about like uh, brothers in the kitchen. Like, how is it that you become so closely affiliated with people that you work with in the trenches? Because I'm a different person outside than it. Then I am inside. <laughs> yeah. I, I do feel like it's a thing with uh, with the kitchens, though, where uh, uh -huh. you know, there's there's a certain level of like, you know, working working other jobs. I guess I could say you don't come out with the same like brotherhood. I guess that you do, that I feel like you do in the kitchen. Uh, yeah. Oh man. Uh I'm a totally different person outside of the yeah. kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm inside the kitchen. I shoot you out, man. Oh yeah, man. Man, I'm like a man. I'm like a pirate in the kitchen, but I'm a teddy bear outside. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard that. You know, like, there's got to be like two different like personalities because when you're trying to like, achieve a mass goal, which seems impossible, I think that's where you build like the brotherhood in the kitchen is because you're in the trenches with people like that. Yeah. And then outside, I mean, you made it through the day. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you, there, there. I do, I do think there is always that instant bond because I've even had, you know, like gone out for drinks and hung out with people who it's like I typically don't even really care for that person, but like we just shared the bond of that same fucking, you know, slaughter of a shift. Like we just crushed that. Like I don't care how much I don't like you on Tuesday. We're going to go out. We're going to have a fucking good time right now. Gonna, oh, yeah. Anyone says shit about you, I'll punch them in the fucking face. <laughs> but you bet that. your ass tomorrow morning, if you fuck up that ticket again, I swear <laughs> to God, I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> I guess that's what you're uh, saying. So do they, so they call people like us bipolar? <laughs> uh, lucky if I'm just bipolar. I mean, come on yeah. now. <laughs> Tripolar. Oh, yeah. Dodecahedric. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes, it's tripolar because men have a totally good personality in the kitchen, and people meet you outside the kitchen is cool, and then you get drunk and <laughs> yeah. different. Man, it's like I don't know. Yeah, you know, like well, after like a solid shift that we're talking general, about, try hide, try hide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, oh, there's shit. like the regaling of victories through an impossible circumstance, which I think is common, like with soldiers as well. You know. Mm -hmm. If ten people held off three hundred, you know, they're gonna brag about it at the nearest bar, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And and I mean it does have that similar that that kinda yeah. The kitchen has that vibe to it where you are and and especially uh you know, depending on the tightness of the place or the tightness of the crew, like, you know, your, your area is basically the people you're working with. And that makes a big difference too. where it's like, you know, and especially like a small scale place, for example, like, uh, like you've got to be tight because <laughs> you get to a point where it's like, I'm going to be shoulder to shoulder with this asshole for fucking eight hours, five days a week, regardless. Cause it's only me, him and two other assholes. And those guys are morning people. And me and this guy aren't morning people. So, <laughs> like, and if they swing a hot pan around to like plate it and they don't say it. And all of a sudden you got a new, like a burn, you know, yeah. you know like a, okay, don't give me stripes, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had the problem. Uh, and I blame, uh, the trend of uh, shorts in the kitchen becoming a big thing. Like, I've, you know, it's become, I feel like, become a way bigger thing than when I was especially first starting. And it was like, you don't even wear regular fucking pants in the kitchen. You wear chef pants so you get the fuck out of the kitchen and find some goddamn chef pants. Like, but nowadays, you know, lots of dudes in shorts. And the one that I'll always get, I'll never burn a dude's legs. I've been good about that. I have slapped someone's <clears throat> leg because I realized I was opening an oven and it was bare fucking leg next to me. Like, get that, get, get that <laughs> out of my way. I don't want to burn that. <laughs> yeah. Hot oven door coming through. Hot I oven mean, oven <laughs> how do you through. even announce that? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the one that I always accidentally get them with is uh, mop water. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, well, shit. I, I'm sorry, I got mop water in your shoe, but I've got a barrier. Why don't you have a barrier? <laughs> Uh, that's, yeah, that's epic. That's cool. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I do not like people wearing shorts in the kitchen. I will tell them to go home, put on some fucking pants. Put on some pants. <laughs> For sure. Uh, jeans don't work. We all know that. But like uh, very loose, like a cotton knit ones, you know, they don't necessarily have to be like checkers it, per se. Mm -hmm. However, like, there's something that breathes for the love of God, you know? Yeah. And, Covers up your bare flesh. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't like my fucking looking chef pants myself, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you probably have a collection, like um, maybe like a uh, some peppers on there, like maybe some skulls, like uh. I have skulls. Um, I have a uh, fucking little skeletons dancing around and shit. A little freak gold. Cool, <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, I got fucking fish that that kind of look like those Jesus Christ fish. That's pretty cool too. But, you know. No, I'm not religious. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Nice prints on pants. That's not. Yeah. I have dragons on my other pants. That's pretty cool. 
I have a fucking um Day of the Dead shit on one of my pants too. There's a little fucking cool looking skeleton things man dressed up and shit it's all it's badass man I love that shit <laughs> right yeah. on. as I figured you have all sorts of uh, chef pants after these years <laughs> now shirts you see me coming to the fucking bar with shirts on my cool shirts yeah you know uh, the last couple years I preferred cooking in like a dishwasher snap up style like a t-shirts oh. you know I mean, I've worn chef coats a lot in my time, don't get me wrong, but that's just too heavy of a cotton, you know? I want, like, you know, fake material that just breathes easily and is light. I kind of, I kind of, honestly, That shit makes me sweat, man. Cotton does make yeah. me sweat. I don't know, I've got a different metabolism than you. I sometimes Earthling. miss the chef coats because I've been in t-shirts for a while. <laughs> and just that, I just always, uh, and that, it goes back to the whole battle thing, man. It always felt like chef coating. Putting on the coat and getting the fucking gear on, you know, putting on the coat, putting on the apron felt like putting on the armor for battle. Or at least the chain mail. <laughs> yeah, and now, now now, it's like, I'm in a, you know, and I've been there for yeah. six, six years now, and it's a t-shirt place, you know. We wear company t-shirts instead of chef coats or anything, and so I always just feel like, uh, still get that kind of feeling like I'm just unarmored. <laughs> like, mm. I'm naked in the war zone. <laughs> Fuck. Don't even <laughs> have boiled leather yeah. on. <laughs> I could singe a nipple off fucking <laughs> way too easily right now. Oh, and some of the shirts they give us, man. Oh, they are comfortable, but they are very nipple conforming. So we've actually had conversations about that before in the kitchen where we're all standing there and we're like, we're four dudes right now. And all of our nipples are very visible. You guys be careful with the fucking hot oil today. <laughs> These new anniversary shirts are super nice, super comfy on the nips, but they will burn them off. Yeah. Well, I'm sure if old Tony was in the mood, he could probably make a little carvings out of carrots of all your nipples that he imagines underneath your shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> Carrot nipples. Oh, man. I did that. Uh, I did a funny one uh, for a server once, and it was a as a dude I worked with, and he was talking about how we don't make, uh, you know, pretty food really. And it was at at where we work now, and uh, you know, it's like you know, you guys make stuff, and you always talk about these things that you make, like, but you don't make any of that stuff anymore. Like, could you even still do do it? So what I did was I took and I made him a. As he had a sandwich and a side salad. So I made a sandwich, and then I made the side salad, but I, like, made the salad super pretty. And then I took a carrot, and the end of it, you know, I daisied up, made oh. the little nice little daisy. Yeah, carrot daisies. But instead of cutting off the little carrot daisy, I just left it attached, and I turned the rest of the carrot into a cock. <laughs> and wedged it into the salad. So when he got it, it's just this pretty little daisy on the side, and he pulls it out, and it's just full on. It was a big old carrot too, so I had balls, <laughs> shaft, tip, all of that just <laughs> deep in his salad. Like, you know, fucking hand <laughs> yeah, hand. it's like tell me I can't make something fucking pretty. I'll show you some knife work. <laughs> yeah, won't take too long either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did it circumcised because carrot-wise, that's harder to do. <laughs> yeah. A lazy man would have just left it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, like, uh, at my new place, they asked me like, to chop up limes the other day because I had my whole line set up. Everything's, like, titched out. You know, it's perfect exactly the way I got backups where I want them at. Just waiting for, like, uh, the door to open. I'm ready for the onslaught. And, like, after, like, maybe, like, eight minutes or 12 minutes we didn't have a customer I'm like hey boss man is like there's something i can do you know it's like well i mean we got other people for that but i guess if you want to i don't know cut limes or something that'd be fine sweet there we go so i went to my first lime and i made a really badass uh inverted like a three-dimensional pac-man out of it <laughs> it's like so is this what you want <laughs> he's like oh my god that's really cool no but what what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, oh, shit. You know, making a three-dimensional Pac-Man that stands up and chomps down at the same time 
only takes five knife strokes. Um, I do a funky stuff like that with two knives. You know, I stab in the middle, turn it over, slant, turn it over there, slant, fall apart. It's so fucking cool. <laughs> I think we're talking about the exact same yeah. cut here, you know? Yeah. One off the top, one off the bottom, yeah. insert through, then carve around, then carve around. Oh, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that that's a, <laughs> that's a, cut some lives like this. I think I taught you guys. Did I? Probably. Um, probably. I, I know you taught you know Fat I, Chef Timmy. Tim, Tim, Tim yeah, Shredder. You, yes, you, sh- you taught Tim. Fat yes, Chef I Timmy. I learned it from Timmy. Where are you, Tim? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Timmy. Oh, come, man. Where where's he at? Yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know where he's not at. Is chiming in right now. Chiming in. He should be oh, chiming man. in. Yes. Well, Fast oh. Chef Timmy is not here on this one. However, he's going to listen to this one, and we'll probably get some retribution from him on it. Oh yeah, yeah. He's going to be so sad he wasn't on it too. You'll you'll probably get an instant like remark right off the bat. Sorry, I wasn't there, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no call, no show. Oh, no call, no man. show. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so love it. I miss him. Fucking ain't here. Yeah, enough fast chef Timmy. Fucking, he's our boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Howley boys for life. For shows. <laughs> yeah. And he has been shredding it on the guitar, too. He just he yeah. just sends fucking riffs this way all the time. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> check out what I've been doing. Speaking what? What about guitar, man? I've been playing a lot of shit myself, man. Yeah. Hells, yeah. Going over like the old classics, or are you, like, uh, are you inventing? No, or? I'm, like inventing. I do like a uh, different fusion, like in like a uh, hillbilly fucking jazzy weird shit. Huh? You know, like slides and you know, you know, bending and shit. It sounds all cool, man. Yeah, man, fuck it. it. <laughs> I got no doubts uh, about that. <laughs> it's a cross between Willie Nelson and fucking Jimmy Page. <laughs> Hells yeah. Oh, damn. It's, it's so yeah. fucking cool, man. That's okay. That's it's so fucking cool, man. It's like slam grass shit. I don't know. <laughs> but it sounds cool, man. I'll bet so. I can't wait to hear it sometime. Man, yeah, I played, man, I played some shit in my fucking electric last night. Just, you know, just jamming and shit. I'll, I'll be gonna piss off my neighbor. <laughs> from the sounds of it he's probably over there fucking jamming <laughs> yeah. no, I, no I think he liked it it was cool man it's the sound yeah. so fucking cool nice and that brings up a topic to me like I really ever trust a line cook that their sole passion is cooking you know you've got to like, have an interest in music or the arts or like Literature or like something, you you gotta brush more than one tooth at a time. <laughs> Zeppelin, man, rules. <laughs> Zeppelin rules. You're s- well, yeah, and you know that kind of goes back to our previous statement too, with the like tripolar, bipolar Ugh. nature of like how how cooks react and like yeah. So if we get off, you know, say say we get a good crushing and we get off work, and you're not at all a different person. Like you're still, you're still exactly. That's that's especially when I start to get like, you know, what's uh, Fuck that guy, yeah. what's this fucking dude steal? Has <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this guy got people Not in his lot. basement or something? <laughs> or yeah. and this is how I was never allowed on a city bus again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, why are you sitting there? That's not even your station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, you got to brush like multiple teeth at a time, you know to eat a good meal I believe and that's why I'm always a fan of you know some of our diehard cooks not only like having a passion for cooking but like I said you know music the arts literature even like politics or history or whatever Mm -hmm. you know get into something you know yeah yeah Yeah. start listening to podcasts namely the chewed up and spit out (laughs) podcast airing every Monday (laughs) <laughs> Damn, I did not know it was a commercial break. Yeah. <laughs> Wise words from amazing chefs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that's how you do it these days, though. You put the ad in the middle of it. That's why I can't watch YouTube anymore. <laughs> Every time I watch them, they're getting me hyped up about something. They're like, check out this new fucking movie trailer. But before we start to check it out, we need to think about our bodies. 
<laughs> Beachbody by Demand sponsored this video, and I've been using it for a month. And then you look at the actual video, and you're like, oh, it's fucking like what I wanted to watch is a minute and a half. And it's two and a half minutes of him fucking trying to sell me Irish Spring or fucking MeUndies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been sleeping on a purple mattress wearing MeUndies for the last 150 years, and I feel amazing. Jeez. <laughs> I, I was just thinking back, like, some of the one-trick ponies that we have all seen on Celebrity, like, videos or cooking shows or have their own shows or their own TV channels. There's one person that comes up repeatedly on this show that none of us like. Could you give a good guess on who that is, Mr. Tony? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, we talked about him before. We do not care for that fellow Bobby Flay. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, I hate that fucker. Well, okay. yeah, I mean, you know, someone's got a show on TV called Beat Me, you know, and uh, refuses to respond to a challenge. So what kind of fucking show is that? It's like saying, I'm the toughest person in the world. Fight me, guys. Shh, shh, shh. I'm talking. I'm the toughest. I will fight anyone. Fight me now. Shh, 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 shh. I will fight anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to check my inbox, but I will fight anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so let's hear your opinion on uh, Chef Lay, if you will. What do you think is uh, his most endearing qualities? Endearing qualities. <laughs> <laughs> There's no endearing shit about his stuff, man. This is man. This is talk shit and thinks he's gonna do barbecues and all this shit. But I don't know, man. Just fuck, man. Man, I just love to go against him head on head on shit. Like shit, you know. You can't beat his uh, red pepper coolie or his uh, cilantro vinaigrette little finishes. Uh, <laughs> shit. And you know the funny thing is too. We always call out Bobby Flay. Uh, and, you know, Sean's been trying to challenge him forever. How the fuck is he a, a fucking top chef? Like, <laughs> yeah. fuck, man? Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, How man. is he getting money for doing nothing? <laughs> yeah. People made him rich. Yeah. But, and, you know, that's the thing. Sean, you know, Sean always calls him out uh, to that pizza challenge. And seeing Sean, uh, Sean challenge him. Uh, would be fun because it would be like, you know, it would be a challenge. It'd be watching like an actual challenge go down. Seeing Tony challenge Bobby Flay would be seeing like, it'd be one of those shows where you, you're you just like weeping by the end. Like, J just stop hitting him. <laughs> he can't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, maybe he knows better. Yeah, uh, well... That's Timmy uh, chiming in on a text saying, uh, uh, he can't do it again tonight. Uh, Fat Chef Timmy's going to have to sit out like, and join in on our wrath towards uh, <laughs> this celebrity chef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, Tim. Just want to say hi to you. That's cool. I love you, man. Yeah. We, we love, love you, you Timmy. He's for sure going to listen no. to this. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, man. Love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Tammy's a part of us. <laughs> oh, oh shit. yeah. Hmm. And I mean, I, I hate. I do. I do think it's funny too. Anytime, uh, and especially with the production shit. Uh, anytime we've talked about doing something, he's always already on the same step. Or like a step ahead of us. I was like, we need to build a computer for video editing. And we talked to Timmy and he's like, I just built a computer for video editing. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Shit, dude, show us how. Cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, at least we have him coming into town in a couple, three weeks or whatever. So. Yeah, we're going to have Timmy live. That's going to be a fucking event. For sure. Oh, Scott, be here with him? Yeah, yeah, dude. If awesome. you want, if you want to come back, we'll get you in on the live. Oh, yeah. You and Timmy both in on a live one together. Yeah, that might be an episode for cooking with pros and cons. If I oh, think we about would it. do a cooking with pros and cons too, for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's that'd be a great one. Yeah, 
just so we know, or just so everybody else knows that we're not just. Yeah, uh, we haven't forgot about it. We just we just had one of our pros get injured. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was not injured by a con, which is what we thought would happen when we first made the show. <laughs> it's pros and cons. Shit, one of the pros got stabbed by one of the cons. <laughs> yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be good times when that rolls around again. So, you know. Yeah, because that's something we can do, and uh, you know, literally beat Bobby Flair. Before he even comes to town. <laughs> well, I don't think Bobby he'll even show up to the challenge once you watch that Bob video. Bobby Flay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bobby yeah. gets flayed when he comes to Durango's. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're still waiting. We're still waiting. Yeah. And Keanu Reeves is on our team, too. I don't know if Jeff told you that. Yeah. The Facebook of Keanu Reeves or a Keanu Reeves imposter liked us calling out Bobby Flay. I was like, that is comedic. Because it wasn't even like, you know, necessarily like, didn't like necessarily like our podcast oh, or listen or anything. It was just directly liked the comment on Bobby Flay's page that was like, Bobby, bring your ass over to fucking Durango and get your ass whooped in a oh, pizza shit. throat out. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we got a lot of good chefs in this town. I'm kind of proud of this town with chefs. But. And the food scene in this town, especially for the size of the town it is, yeah, per is amazing. Like, <laughs> I would not have thought uh, coming here, uh, seeing like the population level, Ugh. that the food scene would be fucking this good. There are some things that I do think, like... I really wish Durango had that you get you get in bigger cities, yeah. like fucking uh, like an actual Chinese market or a halal meat market or some shit like that. But that's mainly just because I miss I miss being able to go get the real. Oh, you know, I would scrap both of those if you gave me one of the fucking uh, what was it, Mechuan meat oh. markets from fucking Texas. <laughs> like, give me one of those where I can go in. Work through a conversation with the dude and walk yeah. out with like a trash bag of fucking carne asada. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> yeah. Like, how much yeah. did that cost? Five dollars, and I got these tacos. <laughs> That's not yeah. a bad mention. Um, I actually want to open up a kind of different style of restaurant in this town, and uh, like a couple of years ago, but I didn't have the backing. Yet. And then it was going to be like a, uh, like a. Fancy soup, fucking restaurant with Amazes, you know. On, and Amazes is like a little sushi thing, you know, but it's French. Man, man, the shit I do with Amazes, oh my god, I change them every day and do some fine soups and good bar and fuck, man, be the best restaurant in this fucking town, man. I shit you not, yeah. man. No, I'm serious, man. That would man, this shit would fucking fly, man. Yeah, not only would it be Amazon, but you could be the soup Nazi. Two birds with one stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no soup for you. No, no. Yeah. You don't like my soup? Get fuck out of my restaurant. Yeah. Yo. Uh, one one place I have been wanting to get out to, um, and it's not it's not actually in Durango, but in Bayfield, uh, the bistro, the Mil Mill Street Bistro, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, is, one, uh, is that the restaurant Dana owns? I think is so. It? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. If it's a restaurant Dana owns, I'll always try it, man. Yeah, because uh, my coworker's wife uh, is the other. I think the other like co-owner or whatever, or the chef. Yeah. But yeah, the, I fucking just uh, hearing the shit that they do. I really like. They change the menu every week. Oh man, fuck yeah, man! I have to do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and as oh, soon as I heard that, that, I was like, "Oh, I gotta, I yeah. gotta see that," because that means you guys are always keeping yeah. it fucking fresh, uber seasonal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, as it should be. You know, I mean, what happened like to the days? I'm sure Tony, a year back in the day when it happened, where chefs would actually go to like a, the fresh produce market or like whatever markets they had on hand before every shift, and design their menu off that. I mean, that seems like that would be the best <laughs> yeah yeah but you know i work 
back in the eighties where we didn't have that fucking GMO shit. It was actually good produce and we had good food back then, but since they've changed GMOs and I'm like, what the fuck, man? It just t- there's no flavor. Mm-hmm. You put too much fucking salt in that shit, we don't need salt in our diets. <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know, just it lacks like ins or it lacks inspiration these days. I mean, I understand like everyone's cost cutting, like you know, trying to do whatever they can. But I mean, it seems like it'd be better to have like the best quality of food and sell out, you know, every day, rather than you know stockpiling your freezer full of. I mean, uh, I you know, I'm thinking about it. I think okay, so a lot of any 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 non uh, kitchen working listener might not might not actually be aware of this but you know some of the weird shit we see nowadays cooking like i shit you not i have seen a carrot the size of my entire forearm and that's that flavor that's it that's that's in width and length (laughs) yes they call them carrots horse dicks yes yeah oh yeah and it was just swung around everyone in the kitchen you know had to make the joke like hold on hold on i'm gonna go out there and hold it give me 200 pounds of horse dicks please (laughs) but yeah some of the some of the shit that uh that we see coming in is is, uh there's some there's some weird food out there (laughs) <laughs> some of the weird yeah. shit they're doing with food makes for some weird food. A strawberry Dude, should not man. be the size of your fist. <laughs> oh, yeah, a fist-sized strawberry. <laughs> fucking ordering that shit, and you have a fucking female fucking purveyor chick thing. You know, like, like, no <laughs> chicken. Uh, and they're like, you know, what kind of carrots you want? You know, it says I want fucking 100 pounds of horse sticks, like, it's a bad thing. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck, man? 100 pounds of horse. And you know what the good purveyor would do, too? Not even get offended. Oh. Just right away <laughs> start looking it up. Yeah, I'll laugh. That's what I love about it. <laughs> I, I ain't going to say where it was from, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right now. <Yeah. laughs> She's cool. And at, le- at least you got 100 pounds of big carrots and not a literal yes. 100 pounds of horse dick meat. <laughs> yeah, look, I didn't even know they carried that. Jesus, okay. <laughs> I think you can only that, sell that man, in Canada. That's what you actually call them. What the fuck, man? <laughs> well, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck, man? That's uh, all right. Yeah. I'm sure she's dealt with more offensive people than you in you know, dealing with chefs. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh, and then food purveyors, uh, you know, I've I've had a, a a few different, a bunch of different ones over the years, but there's been some funny food purveyors. Like we had one uh, uh, that she was pretty much like meant to be like the honey pot Ugh. of food purveyors, because you know she was a she was just a super attractive, like early twenties girl that would come in and try to sell you on our company in like a short skirt. And all that, just like all decked up and come in with the like, you know, you've got to try our food over here. And so right away, you know, it was when I was working at Crave with Sean and she came in and tried to like tried to run our game thing on me. And I was just like, you know, like one one, you know, I'm always interested because at that point I was running super low food cost. And so I was interested in any any purveyor that walked through the door. I'd be like, let me see what fucking prices you got. Can you shave 50 cents off my tomatoes and get me better tomatoes? But, you know, (laughs) seeing her game, I instantly went and upsold Sean because he was single then. I was like, oh, so this is like the game you're coming in with? Then, like, yeah, no, I'd like to schedule a tour of your factory, but I'm really busy being the the head chef. (laughs) Let me go get my sous chef and send him out here to talk with you. (laughs) So I go back to my buddy who's single and send him out there. And, uh, you know, he goes and talks to her. And uh, schedules us a tour of their factory. And, you know, she's going to have all the prices for me and all the paperwork cool. shit I want at that point. We go do do the tour. And, you know, it even seemed like at first he was going to try to spit some game when we showed up. But right away she's like, do you guys like peppers? Like super spicy peppers? And I was like, <laughs> ah, you know, it's a little early in the morning for me and Sean being, you know. Kind of a cool, tough guy going into it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll take whatever you want to give him. Just pot hands him over a raw Carolina Reaper, and he oh. just takes a fucking bite of it. 
and then we go on the tour and so the whole tour he's pretty much just quiet and just fucking <laughs> pouring sweat <laughs> just, just sitting there like he's like I a pepper hit me harder than uh, i thought and we get over to the back and they had some like sodas or something like that and he's just, soda can, for pepper can, no, no, can no, we no, get no, one no. of those or can we get a can we get a beverage milk or tortillas stops the burning yeah can't what anybody says. So, so oh yeah. white russian Cheers. works pretty well oh yeah <laughs> oh well but but you got to yeah. you got to understand too this you know younger attractive chick and she's looking like reapers or no things so you know of course the single guy's not gonna be like i need a glass of milk or i'm gonna fucking puke <laughs> he's gonna be like are those sodas i'm kind of parched <laughs> <laughs> I, I, see right, man, I probably would have been sitting in the corner laughing at his ass like yeah. oh no i was, I was having asshole. a good time i was mm. having a good time oh, man, laughing at his, <laughs> yeah laughing at and, she, and she thought she had us yeah. too she thought her little her little hook had us too, and and uh and I had to break it to Sean too. The second we walked out, and I looked at the price sheet, and she had handed me, and I just took one look at it, and I was like, "No, they're oh, overpriced." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of that produce I saw was garbage, and they're overpriced. Mm. So you know, I'm good. Yeah. I have to take a break. Go to the bathroom. Word. Old fucking people. No <laughs> people. <laughs> no worries there, but okay. Yes. Oh my god, it'll blow up. Oh. Large garlic cubes. Sauteed ass shit. Put it over some basmati rice. Oh, that's Cajun right there. That's Cajun right there. Cajun. <laughs> That'd be an etouffee. <laughs> That'd be an etouffee right there. Oh, man. Shit, we should start yeah. that like Welcome like... back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I started that shit. Okay, yeah. good deal. <laughs> as soon as, to- as, soon as, as soon as Tony started talking about food, I was like, the people need to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> this grandmaster chef over here, great yeah. dad says he's going to eat tonight. <laughs> I'm going to try to. I'll just probably just go home and jam out some cool jams or something. Man, huh. I have this tune in my hand and I need to get out. It's pretty cool, man. I, once I get it down, I'll turn you guys on. It's pretty cool. I always play fucking yeah. cool wrists and shit. Really great. Fuck cool yeah. Shit, man. I like mm-hmm. music. For sure. I can see like uh, being a musician myself back in the day, and not so much these days, but sometimes like there's a tune in your hand, you gotta get out. Man, you never heard me play. I have, actually. Maybe you have it. Okay, maybe not Truly's. <laughs> No, I never played guitar. I think I might have heard a recording at no, some point. No, I didn't do recording. I never did because I don't like doing recordings on. Oh shit! Face okay. crackers, right? People like say, "Hey man, this is cool. I think I'll steal it." Man, fuck you. Yeah. Well, I but know. I play in person, and it's pretty fucking, pretty fucking cool, man. Yeah, I mean, if you ever want to record, I know some guys with recording equipment. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, I'm sure Claude's got better music recording equipment than we do. Oh, I can do your music video, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, Claude from the Roadhouse? I don't think he's at the Roadhouse. Well, he wasn't there when I left, so. Um, no. That's what Claude's talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Claude yeah. from the Roadhouse. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I saw him when I left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, um, his uh, recording equipment is quite solid, and he's definitely been trying to get us like over there, like to his studio at some points. Mm-hmm. It'd be kind of fun. I know that guy is multi-talented to where you know he can grab like the drums, I can grab a bass, and you could just shred over the top of us. You know, <laughs> shit. Yeah, options are endless there. You know, um, my friend Judah is a fucking good bassist, man. He just got up there on his bass just fucking play some shit man like with my mouth up and go you fucking play that good man he's good man right on I know dude is a man of many a talents no he's fucking man, man he's actually fucking good I, I I like the bass I haven't played it though in, in uh far too many years well like I and I, it's one of those two where like the amount of time I played it wasn't significant enough to be one of those where it's like, you should pick it back up. It'll be easy. Like, no, nah, I've literally <laughs> played it for like nine months and then didn't play it for like 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> Spent like a 250 hours on two songs. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I loved it when I had it. But yeah, no, someone had a bass. Uh, 
And it was still probably like seven or eight years ago. Someone had a bass. And I'm like, you said you could play bass back in the day. Pick it up. And I picked it up and tried to do anything. And it was just like, no. You know, I bought my daughter a PB bass back in the day. And she sold it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. A PB bass. Mm-hmm. Like, I would. you sell it? Man, she was a first bass. And that's cool. I don't know why she sold it. Yeah. Like, you should give it back. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bass. A yeah. PD bass. Come on. Yeah. I, I had a I had a super nice one and an amp. And so I oh, and I was I was in Hawaii. I was I was young. I think I was still when I was like seven yeah, seventeen. Because I got it and I got it with a uh basically the deal was uh you know the dude who was selling it to me was leaving town. So I was gonna pay him half on this paycheck. And then send him the other half. Hmm. Uh, when, One of those island deals. <laughs> when he, uh, you know, when I got my next paycheck. Mm-hmm. And I had his address and all that. And there would have been no problem whatsoever with that. I was very diligent about it. I very much like the base. Mm-hmm. If the day after my paycheck that I gave him the money, I didn't break my back. <laughs> so that's Shit. where that comes into play. And then I'm laid up for six months. And Bless so it. over that time, I... I play the bass, and uh, um, who is your bass god? Um, I fucking I really liked Les Claypool. I really loved him, but fucking um, let's see, yeah, Les Claypool, Sublime. I can't even remember that guy's name. Bradley Noel. <laughs> Bradley Noel. Holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually could remember that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. My my bass god. Back in the day, was Lemmy. Yes, I was gonna oh, bring up Lemmy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he was my bass guy because man, he was the front man. He he was cool. Yeah, I fucking love Lemmy. Lemmy's the best. Yeah. Well, Lost Claypool, he's pretty out there. <laughs> well, <laughs> See, also too. I mean, he's fucking out there. So See, and I think is, it, part of me knew in the back of my mind, like if I were to ever have to pick up the mic and sing, uh, I couldn't be Lemmy. No. I could totally be Les Claypool. Yeah. Motherfucker has a nasally voice just yeah. like me. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry was a race, race car driver. driver. <laughs> Drove so goddamn fast. Never did win man. no checkered flags. Man, Never did come in last. Like <laughs> Nailed it. Shit, <laughs> yeah. But, man, he played at the House of Blues in yeah. Dallas so many times. He used to sit on a balcony. I'm going to have to cook for everybody. Just fucking check out a concert. Uh, you know, a balcony is here and the stage is right there. So you can see him so close. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right there. It's like right on. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, he's, he's an amazing bass player. But yeah. He's different. He has a different set of mind. It, it is. It's it, And it. And I loved it. Yeah, I, I loved the bass. But yeah, I got it. Uh, dude came back. And because I didn't give him a second payment, took the bass from me. Oh, man. Took the bass back from me. And that was just one of those even, like, where I I was just ultimately sad. And everyone in the entire house was just looking at him, shaking his head like, you're an asshole. Because he comes mm. back to town, right? <laughs> and he comes back to town. And first thing, he's like, I fucking crushed it out where I went. I'm rolling in the money now. And then comes over to my house, knocking on the door. He's like, where's my money for the base, motherfucker? And I'm literally, like, in a body brace. And I'm like, I, d- I told you, like, I sent you a letter, a well-worded letter. And he's like, yeah, but you could have made the money by now. And I'm like, no, I've literally been, you see the, like, adjustable bed over there? The hospital bed in the living room? Like, wow. that's where I've been living. And, you know, came in. And he's like, well, I'm taking the base back then. You can just consider that uh, first payment, the payment to rent the base. And takes it and goes to leave. And the whole house is just sitting there like, Bruh. you are the worst person who's ever existed. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised you did not get slapped with the flip-flop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, thinking about it, I'm very surprised he made it out there, with, out of there without getting slapped, too. But, yeah, that's a... Uh, very, very dick move. Very dick move. But uh, yeah, that's uh, 
and that squashed my whole bass playing life. <laughs> and I, I, I do always have that. Like that's one of the few. So I don't you, do many what ifs. So but you never had. So you never picked up a, like an acoustic bass. No. That makes some really. Cool I, I wanted to try that too. I might. I do want to fuck around with one of those like the uh, big ass, because that was the thing I was always like. Uh, well, the Fender No Fret, man, that you know, they're pretty cool. It's a four or five string. That fucking badass. Mm-hmm. Cool shit, man. Yeah, it's kind of like playing a banjo on the front porch, like playing an acoustic bass on the front porch is pretty fucking yeah. suave. <laughs> well, I've also, like, the, you know, like the, well, we're talking like the big, like, big yeah. acoustic, um, yeah. Like cello style. <laughs> the, the big stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always, I've always wanted to fuck with one of those. Because I definitely did think uh, when I was playing bass, that was one thing so, that I um, totally thought. Is I'm like, I wish it was There's a bluegrass dude that plays that shit, pretty fucking badass. You know, he played for um, Strength and Numbers. And I love that band. Um, he played for a lot of good bands. He played for New Grass Revival. His name is Edgar Edgar Myers. Yeah, guy's fucking badass, man. Mm-hmm. Man, man, he played with Bell and Flex, Sam Bush. Self-awareness, that's pretty bad, too. Brain fart. I doubt this is my list name. <laughs> no, I know it's not. <laughs> I've heard of her. <laughs> no, it's not a her, it's a him, man. It's fucking badass. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck's his name? Come on, Tony. Brain fart. Maybe up. Send me a help. <laughs> Remember. Yes, we sell member berries. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> member berries. Uh, well, shit. Yeah, I think uh, Mark O'Connor. That's his name. <laughs> there Mark O'Connor. O'Connor. There Brock we go. O'Connor. <laughs> Mark O'Connor. Mark O'Connor. Yes. Man, you guys I, ever heard of him? I think I've heard of him before. Yeah, oh, Mark man, O'Connor man, sounds familiar. Ass, yeah. He's the greatest fucking fiddle violinist in the fucking world. I shit you know. All right, Mark O'Connor. We'll Mark check O'Connor. you out. Mark O'Connor. <laughs> We're not coming for you, but we are no. going to look into you. You've caught her eye. <laughs> <laughs> You've caught her eye. <laughs> Maybe our ear next. <laughs> hey, man, I'm this fucking Colorado bluegrass motherfucker. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, bluegrass, badass. old he's rock. Badass, yeah. Man. He's badass. I, I, I want to hear your guitar sometime. You're, you're going to have to play some guitar for yes, us because that to. sounds like a fucking thing. Washburn on my 12 string or one of those guitars. Man, I'm having a Taka 1972. Man, this thing is, it's a G01. Rare breed, man. Uh, I bought it off a friend who wanted, who wanted to cut it up. And so I told him, no, do not cut it up. Don't cut it up. <laughs> so I paid 200 bucks for it. So I had it appraised, and it was just in perfect condition. Um, they appraised it at 1800 bucks. That baby. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so original man. I'm not sure. No, it's a Taka three hundred one original. It's just a fucking stamp inside. Nineteen seventy two. Like okay. I knew what I was buying. <laughs> nice. Sorry, yeah. sorry, bro. <laughs> yeah. Nice turn on your change there. Oh man. Yeah. Man, man, this thing sounds so cool, man. Man, it actually sounds. I think better than my Washburn. Ooh, the Washburns are classics. Yes, this this one's my nice. Yeah, I love it. But this uh, Taka three hundred one, my God, man, this sounds so different. I want to put a um, pick up with it, like uh, do some cool shit on it. <laughs> right no, I'm now serious, man. This is a fucking wah wah shit. Fucking well, thing, you know, like, your ear for music is shit, you know? is pretty close <laughs> to your taste for food. You know, <laughs> no one's gonna doubt that. No one's gonna doubt that. <laughs> Well, Sir Tony Hunt, a.k.a. Greybeard, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on tonight. I'll go, I'll, I'll oh, yeah. say an honor. It has been an honor to have you, sir. Heard that. Man, I wish we had some cameras so I could actually sell some food one day. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, we'll, we'll, get, uh, we'll get our cameras set up next one. We've been having, uh, for all the loyal listeners, we have been having some video technical difficulties nice. lately. Uh, we will get them figured out. Uh, once one of us gets smarter, Dustin. 
Or we could just import Timmy, which is going to happen in two and a half, three weeks. Yeah, and T we... minus two and a half, three weeks till Timmy gets here and fixes all of our problems, folks. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So if you have problems, uh, put them in the comments. We'll have Timmy look into them while he's here. Um, other hey, than my that, brothers, um, hope you're doing all right. You know, the guy's supposed to, the house is supposed to go over. Love you, man. <laughs> might be there, but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heard that. I don't yeah. think so, man. Oh, gray beard's in high demand these days, as yeah. always. <laughs> yeah. And also, one of these days, uh, Mon, we would like to get you on here, too. So, oh, if you do Yeah, listen, come on, yeah. Mon. Come on over, man. And Have a sit done. down. Yeah. It'll be a good time. <laughs> Heard that. Well, to our <laughs> listeners out there, it's been a fantastic time. Hope you enjoyed. Yep. Have a good night, everybody. Yo, peace, love, and zephyr. Yo, Still he's... Jeff. <laughs> oh, shit. There we, you know what? There we go. And it always happens, and we never know when it's going to happen, when someone <laughs> nails the fucking title of the episode. But I think you just nailed it right there. Peace, love, and Zeppelin, everybody. <laughs> Have a fucking good night. Rock on. <laughs>